A very good evening to you from Miale 72 Lounge. Welcome to Obina Show Live. We broadcast live from Miale. This is in Lovington. They have ample parking space. They have a car wash on site. Their food is amazing. So if you're looking for a private space to come and have a good time, definitely you have to pass by Miale 72. Tell them Obina sent you and ask for the Miale special. That's the one that I prefer. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this interview has been waited for by a lot of individuals because the person I'm interviewing today is a very controversial individual. <laughs> He's, if not the most learned, he's among the most learned individuals, not only in the Kenyan parliament, but in the country as a whole. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Honorable Babu Owino. Kosawa. Ni Baka Kosawa hapo. Obina eh. kazi Kosawa. Eh. <laughs> Sasa mpaka introduction mpaka hapo Kosawa. Uh, Kitu unaweza nataka niongeze? Umesahau major things. Yeah. That is making <laughs> the juice be worth the squeeze. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Number one, uh, you talked about learned which is very important and urgent. Okay. And actually I would like to stress on that. Okay. Repetition enhances stress. Okay. As a figure of speech. So Sawa. definitely uh, having 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 gone through school and school gone through me oh there's um, a difference uh, yes there's okay. there's just going through school where you just pass from one gate to the other okay <laughs> and, and the school going <laughs> going through, through you, you. Yeah. okay okay so proud of my education because it is what has made me be where i am okay why not for education i would not be seated here and for that reason, I would like also to let Kenyans know okay. yeah, that I got first class honors in actual science. <laughs> so I'm an actuary, master's in actual science, oh, a first lawyer, <laughs> master's in, a, in, in law, okay. and six diplomas. Wow. So you have how many degrees? Four degrees and six diplomas. So if, if you didn't mention that and there are things that I earned. Okay. Then Sorry, I, I felt quite. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> <laughs> the individual I'm interviewing today has six diplomas and four degrees from the University of Nairobi. The also University have, of Nairobi. Yes, I have to add that in there as well. <laughs> yeah. And then any other thing that I've forgotten? No, that's Member okay. of Parliament Maybe. for Embakasi East. Republic. Oh. Embakasi East Republic. The Republic of Embakasi East, yes. the great. With one supreme leader. Babu Owino. Kido kido ko mekwa Kim Jong Un. But how have you been? Uh, great. Top Ukosa? of the world. Yeah. Yeah, never been better. Karibu sana and thank you for honoring our invite. Yeah. Na jua waheshimiwa wengine nikiwaambia wakuje, oh you know, you know, because most of them don't have much them done. So they like to kienda pale sasa it's a hot seat. And asema nimefanya nini? So I've been uh, seeing the work that you've, you've been doing because you are not shy of sharing what you're doing, what you're developing, where. So I've seen that over a period of time. Uh, but before you get into that and we get into the stories that some people are here to listen about, let's start from way back. Who is Babo Wino? Why Babo Wino? First of all, your name is Paul Ongili. Not, where did Babu Wino come from? My name is uh, Paul Ongili Babu Wino. Okay. So people always think that it is an alternative name, uh, Babu Owino, but it is one name. Babu oh. Owino, Paul Ongili, or Paul Ongili, Babu, Babu Owino. Owino. Okay. So depending on which combination you want to take, if you want to start with Babu and end with Paul, <laughs> or Ongili and end with Owino, okay. or Owino and end with Babu. So they are all my names yeah. uh, enshrined in the ID. Oh, nice. Me, yes. I thought that I've known you for a while, but somehow I thought Babu was like... No, Babu. Babu is my official name. Okay. Because uh, as I was growing up, mom used to call me Babu. Oh. Yeah, mommy, daddy, Babu. Babu. Yes. Okay, okay. You reminded so, her of the grandfather. So I think uh, she saw a lot of wisdom in me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's true. Kelly. That's true. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you were born and raised where? I was born raised in Nyalenda slums. Okay. Yes, uh, and uh, from Nyalenda slums, that's where we were really trained. Actually, I was trained. I can I can say I went through training. For what? Uh, the life itself. Okay. Okay. Yes, life itself. Because um, 
right now this is the time that I can actually say confidently that whatever I went through in Yalenda slums really made me to be who I am. It's like an initiation ceremony. It's an initiation ceremony, exactly. Uh, and Obina, at times you might go through a lot in life and think that that is the end of you. Those are things, anytime you go through in life, know that they are bringing the best characters in you. Know that they are, they, they are shaping you for your future. Okay. Know that without that, then you, you cannot not be, be where you are. And just like uh, Judas in the Bible, he was put specifically in a place to betray Jesus so that there would be salvation. So without mm. Judas, there would be no, there would be no salva salvation. Okay. So wise, without this, wise word. <laughs> <laughs> without okay. these uh, hard moments, hard times in life, yeah. then you're not a complete person. You're not a complete person. You're not a complete person. So having gone through the life that I went through, right now, if you tell me lack food, I know what it is to lack food. Therefore, I will chip in. If you tell me that you lack school fees, I know what it is to lack school, lack school fees. If you tell me that you are in a cell or in a prison, I know what it is to be in a prison or to be in a cell because I, uh, uh, I, was, I was being arrested as early as I was in primary school. So you are being you, arrested in primary? Yes, because I was selling changa. Oh, hey, I thought we had a revolution in Kitambo. <laughs> <laughs> so mom was selling changa. Mom uh, resolved. My dad passed when I was in class three. Okay. Mom resolved to selling changa because that was the only way that we could make ends meet. Okay. And uh, why not for changa? I would not be here. You not, not be who be a you are. Parliament. That's why if I hear Rigiji fighting uh, the issues of uh, Changa, actually I get offended. Because so you, you actually support Changa? I really support it. Because from Changa, you get doctors. From Changa, you get actuaries like myself, a lawyer like myself, a leader like myself, a member of parliament like myself. And you'll get other professions, other, prof uh, other professionals in different professions. So from that Changa, you will get you don't Some feel like it's endangering people. people's lives having that is not gone through cabs. You see, people go even blind drinking you see, ethanol. Changa goes through a process called fractional distillation. That is chemistry. Okay. Using a Liebig condenser, if you now go into a laboratory, <laughs> now the Liebig condenser in this in this case is a pot. <laughs> it's a pot. It's uh -huh. a pot. Yeah. But it goes through a process called fractional distillation. Normal. Manufacturing. In fact, then these are the normal spirits and vodkas and and uh, and uh, I'm even forgetting the name of alcohol because nowadays I don't drink vodka, gin, <laughs> gin <laughs> yeah, whiskey, or whiskey, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, or or uh, cognac. Okay. Now, at least those ones can be more harmful because of why there are things which are added into them, additives. But changa is fractional distillation; is pure. But you see. The best way to stop consumption of Changa, if the government wanted to stop Changa, is to provide jobs for those selling and for the idle youth. The best way to provide a solution is not going and harassing chiefs and harassing uh, the women and men selling Changa. But I would also advocate for the fact that those people who are selling should moderate so that people are not served in excess. Okay. People are not given in excess. But Changa excess just with 10 bob, Baba will Excess of everything <coughs> is dangerous. Yeah, yeah. Okay, too so much of everything is dangerous. So if it is 10 bob, you chew, but you see, that is fractional distillation. That's why it's yeah, called the thing. Is, <laughs> you know, <laughs> by the time that thing evaporates and, <laughs> and it condenses, it's a different weapon. But what is the difference between Changa and Tequila? Tequila also, you do one shot and you're done. Yeah. I think it's just the approvals so, because Kebs feels they've so not the approved. So the only difference is that everybody has a poison of choice. Okay. Your poison of choice may be cognac, may be whiskey, may be That's gin, what you can may afford. be champagne. Somebody's poison of choice is Changa, Muratina, Busa. That is the level they can afford. But if the government could give jobs to these people, okay. then somebody will graduate from Changa to beer. We'll take Tasca. No, we'll the minute you start taking Changa, there's Guinness. no going back, bro. That okay. is like the deepest but you can of graduate. that. graduate. Because of the value. Maybe, but Changa is a bit... And you see why people also go drinking Changa is because of depression, because of stress, because there are no jobs. Somebody uh, is having 10 shillings and that person has no money to pay school fees for the child, has no money to buy food. Then okay. what do you resort to? Short-term solution. A short-term solution where now 
You would rather get drunk to forget your problems. So the best way to, to deal with problems of Muratina, Changa, Busa is to provide jobs to the youth because an idle mind is a devil's workshop. Provide jobs to the youth. Provide jobs to those selling okay. the Changa. So, mom was selling Changa. <laughs> Yes. You were in school. She was doing this to take care of you and your siblings. Then when mom is not around, you are selling Changa. Ama, why were you being arrested? I was selling Changa. Most of the time after school, I'm the one who was selling Changa. Okay. Yes, so Police were throughout Gikuja. my primary school, my high school, even on the day that I was going to do my KCSC biology practicals, I was arrested. I slept in Central Police Station. In Kisumu? In Kisumu. There's a good OCS called uh, OCS Wanyama. He's retired now. Yeah. Wanyama is a good person because the person who arrested me, the arresting officer. You guys, you know we can hear you, right? Very good. The, the arresting officer, what he did was very, very simple. Uh, I requested him that I was going to sit for exams the following day, for okay. biology practicals. But he said that, when are you the only person who is going to school? And he put me in a cell. And that person called me the other day to ask me for bursary. And you know what? I remembered and said, anyway, in the spirit of forgiveness, let me educate the child because the child did nothing wrong to me. So I oh, sent his him child? Bursary. Yes. I sent him bursary oh, wow. okay. just a month ago. So uh, in the morning when the OCS came, I started uh, knocking the door loud enough for him to hear from his office. Then when he came, he asked me what's the problem. I told him I was arrested. I couldn't uh, afford uh, 500 shillings to be set free, and I have exams now as we speak. He released a vehicle, police vehicle, Land Cruiser. I went to Kisumu Boys. Kisumu Boys to Central Police Station is a uh, five minutes drive. I went to, I went to school, did my did biology bio. practicals in home clothes. Back to cell. Then, you know, he just released me. Oh. Yes, and then I just went to, I went home, but. Uh, that you know that was just one in a million how many of those are happening how many of our children are losing opportunity just because they can't afford that opportunity okay so having brought up uh, having been brought up from that lifestyle i know what it is to okay. lack something in life so this was your childhood growing up how did you perform in that case you the one you did from the cell uh, I've always been an excellent student. <laughs> that when you talk about uh, matters of uh, education in the intellectual balance, uh, my brain is at optimum. I was told to come with a dictionary today, but <laughs> here we are. <laughs> By the end of tonight, I will have learned a lot of things. Yes. So how did you end up in Nairobi, though? So in Nairobi, I came to school. After my KCSE from primary school, uh, KCP, I went to Kisumu Boys. From Kisumu Boys, there is no single day that I was out of top three, out of 300 uh, students. Then I went to a levels. I got a scholarship to study the Cambridge system, a levels, okay. which I studied successfully. I got distinction. From a levels, I, w I got a scholarship to study actuarial science in Southern Hampton in uh, in South uh, South Land in London, Southern Hampton University in yeah. London. So I couldn't afford the 30%. I got 70% scholarship. That's when I opted to join the University of Nairobi. Okay. And then at the University of Nairobi, now things started moving. I became a student leader in the year 2011, 2012. How did that happen, though? Mm. Because from Nya, Nya Lenda <laughs> to student, so student leader. leader. You, when I met you, you were student leader. At that yes. time, yes, I remember yes. helping Actually, in the campaigns. Actually, the one who was doing my campaigns yeah, at the yeah, university. Yeah. And that's why I've been there. Any function that I do hold, I have always to call you. you and the, I'm grateful you the, for you that. You are the thank only you. person who hosts my functions. Yeah, thank you and, for uh, that. And uh, I believe in you so much, and I know that even you, Obina, where we are, it's just a matter of time. The difference between me and you is just time. Tomorrow, you will be here. I'm the one who will be interviewing you. <laughs> or we'll be interviewing each other. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I know your potential, yeah. and I know where you will be. Now, back to why did I become a student and leader. Oh, yeah, yeah. Number one, from primary school, I've always been a prefect from class three. Oh. Then class seven, I was assistant head boy. Class eight, I was a head boy. Then went to Kisumu Boys. Throughout, I was a student leader from form one to form four. Hmm. Then went okay. for my A-levels. I was a student leader for two terms for my A-levels okay. from five and six. Then at the University of Nairobi, I became a student leader for four terms. So I'm a God-chosen student, a God-chosen leader. Who did so you I've dethrone? Been a leader throughout. <laughs> in UN. Uh, 
actually I came in at a point where Sonu was uh, suspended. Okay. Magoha was the Magoha was, was the vice was chancellor. The vice chancellor yeah. Magoha was the vice chancellor. David Osiani, I took over from David Osiani. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I became a student leader for four terms after that. That was something. Uh, yeah. <laughs> During that time, what Babu said was constitution. Yeah. Babu, I'm saying that Yeah, yeah, yeah. test as one your opponents. You know, <laughs> as a leader, <laughs> it is me that the students wanted to listen and the students uh, wanted uh, uh, to govern them. Okay. As Babu, and uh, I offered myself delivered to students and you could see what I did. I went through a lot of things, fought for them at a school fee when fee was being increased by the government. We never agreed to that. That's why we were going for demonstrations which are enshrined in the constitution. When uh, help delayed, you know, to a student, even one shilling means a lot. Because that student comes from the village, comes from the slum. The parents they are coming from very, very poor backgrounds. And to this student, without help, the student cannot go to school, cannot go to class, cannot afford accommodation, cannot yeah. get food, cannot be a student. That's why as a student leader, I had to take all that for the that comrades for the comrades because a comrade is always right. Comrade is never wrong, <laughs> and if a comrade is wrong, then a comrade refer is always to right. Refer number one. <laughs> <laughs> if rule number two fails to apply, refer, refer to rule but number But even this time, people said one. you are you are the leader of of goons. People considered your crew goons, like you guys used to like cause havoc. If there's something uingetaoske, Babu is the one leading the demo. Go back home. But let me ask you: How do you call an engineering student a goon, a medical student a goon? An actual science student, a goon. The behaviors. An education student, a goon. Behaviors. How do you call an intellectual a goon? These were intellectual goons, <laughs> not just any <laughs> other goon. <laughs> also, you don't leave it at goon. No, no, intellectual no, goons. Intellectual goons. Hey, because the you goonism, guys used to have. The goonism was here. You'd, you'd uh, close Uhuru Highway. Now nobody would pass. I remember that time National Theatre is where I used to go and chill most of the time. <laughs> yeah, we used it to was, meet a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it was a hot zone, <laughs> but people were like, hey, Babu has released the goons. Comrade <laughs> power. It is gone case. No, but, but you see, doing that demonstration is something which is recognized in the apex of the law, okay. in the constitution of Kenya. So it is something which is allowed. Picketing, demonstrating. Just not vandalizing. But of which we were not doing that. There is no single ah. day you heard that the university property was vandalized. Not <laughs> yes. No, even Inje, we were not doing uh, anything. We were, we were, we were, we had our targets, and targets were very simple. Yeah. The first target was the person who wanted to increase university fees, <laughs> which was either the president or the cabinet secretary. The second okay. target was when the police started rioting. No. Oh, the police <laughs> the were the police ones who were rioting. <laughs> but. If, if you get peaceful demonstrators, yeah, why would you lob tear gas at them? That is rioting. Okay, okay. Now that is when the rubber had to meet the road. <laughs> meet the road. Okay. Yes. So you, you still comrade is right. Comrade is <laughs> <laughs> okay. So comrade went. That life but went. Anyway, I did what I was supposed to do yeah. as a student leader. Was supposed to protect the inherent interest of my students. Okay. Which I did successfully, and I don't regret yeah. doing that. And it is what has made me be where I am because of that good that I did to the students, is what was carried forward yeah. to now. It is the to good now. news that the students told their parents at Embakasi East constituency. Yeah. And in fact, the residents of Embakasi East constituency poached me from the university <laughs> to serve them. <laughs> Which brings me to the story. Yes. From you and you are there for a while. People are like, "Kwani babu, amekuwa museveni, amalizi." Then somehow Embakasist. Why Embakasist? Kuna West. There was Langata. Then there was yes. the, there's a lot of yes. why Embakasist. You know, politics is about strategy. Okay. So there are a lot of strategies that you can uh, take into consideration be before going to vie in a particular place. You look at. Uh, how everything is in that constituency from the from the then member of parliament okay. in office and uh, how he was performing how he was delivering vis-a-vis -vis other members of parliament to the wave as at that moment okay. to yourself as an individual to the area knowing that uh, uh, in Bakasi East is mixed there's middle class there's the, the 
there are also people who are staying in uh, in the slums in Mbakasi. So there's a mixture of uh, of uh, Kenyan citizens. Yeah. Yeah. So with uh, with the middle class, I could appeal to their mindset, to their brains. With the people who are who are probably in the low class in different slums, then I was also a slum boy. So we were bands of a feather. Identify with them. Either way, we were bands of a feather with those who are who are in the middle class and also those who are in the slums. We are bad. We were bad. I was a bird of a feather, and I'm still a bird of a feather to them. Now. Okay. Uh, yes. So you got in. Who was the the MP then? Uh, John is uh, John Omondi. It's called John Omondi. So you got in this your second term. Yes. And you you've had uh, you've rubbed shoulders with a gentleman called Muraidi. Yes, like, uh, yes, yes, yes. He was also vying <laughs> for that seat. Yeah, What's the situation like? Alice Mulimpiga, the situation there. No, 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 no. You remember the story when he came out and said, Babu has sent his goons. Da, 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 da. It's, it's never been easy between you and him. You know, politics, politics are kuna kukua soft in politics. I yeah. didn't, he wasn't beaten. Otherwise, you could have seen it everywhere. But uh, if you keep crying, crying everywhere, then you're not a leader. A leader should, a leader should absorb, you should have so, shock absorbers. You cannot just go in the public and start crying everywhere. How will you, how will you help? Yeah. Okay. Will you be crying when somebody tells you that they don't have school fee? You are crying with them. Like the other one I saw was crying uh, in front of, uh, of, of school, school kids. A school kid should see you as a role model, as a person they look up to. But if you are crying and they also don't have school fee, they also don't have food, you are trying to tell them that you are helpless. It's like you move from mass to earth. <laughs> you see? You should motivate them. Even when in the middle of a crisis, when yeah. things are tough, you should tell them that it will be okay. It is tomorrow's problem. Today's problem, you solve it. Yeah. But you don't start crying everywhere. You are, you, you, your people are crying of problems. You are crying <laughs> okay. because they are crying. How are you doing that? How are you providing solutions? So if Muredi was crying, then yeah. that was very good <laughs> for me because he's a weakling. Okay. So you and him are not friends? No, politics is just a, it's just a contest. Okay. It's just like any other competition, like okay. athletics, like football. Okay, they are winners, they are losers. Yes, they are winners, they are losers. So by the end of the day, you embrace each other. Yeah. But I don't like weak people in my life. Any weakling, me, I okay. don't like. There were even accusations during this second term when you're vying and everything. There was a situation that came about about the returning officer that went missing. Exactly. And you accused of killing him. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were stories there and people were like, oh, this person, da, 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 da. And you came and spoke about it. Mm. What was that about? Let me ask you, Obina. You are contesting. I contested. Yeah. I had 57,000 votes. Muredi had 27,000 votes. A difference of 30,000 votes. Then would you kill a person who's supposed to announce you? Or Why you didn't Ruto kill Chebukati at Bomas? Okay. Because he was waiting for Chebukati to announce, announce him. him. Whether I won through orthodox means or <laughs> <laughs> whether I <laughs> A win is a win. <laughs> but you see, by the end of the day, okay. this returning officer, the first question in a murder of any person that is always asked, who would benefit from the death of mm. this person? Who is the beneficiary of the death? That's why when a person dies, the first investigation they do is the family. If it is a wife, they investigate the husband. If yeah. it is a husband, they first investigate the wife. Yeah. The next thing they look at, was there business involved in it? Or were you sleeping with somebody's wife or not? So who would benefit from the death of a returning officer? Is it a winner who is waiting to be announced? Or is it a loser who has lost election and doesn't want results to be announced. <laughs> Tell me. I'll drink to that. <laughs> I'll, I'll take it back to you. <laughs> and that's why they've never taken me to court <laughs> up to date because they know okay. I'm not involved. I wasn't involved in that case. <laughs> wow. Okay. So now the Republic of Embakasi East is in your hands. Yes. So far so good. I've been, uh, when I drive around, I see good roads. Uh, from Feather, there's a friend of mine who lives around Feather Nyayo. Yes. So in it, that, that route used to be very bad. Right yes. now it's nice. Then there's another one joining next to that one about going to Tawala. I don't know how it's called. Yes, yes. But when you fwata it, you can talk lazy this other side next to Greenspan. Yes, yes. I don't know the name of that route, but it was never there. It was very bumpy. Kitambo nowadays is nice. Also, yeah. Tawala, I've seen Kidogo Barabaras in a change. Let's just do 
an overall check because you said you promised and you delivered you over delivered yes, yes, yes. so top of mind which roads have you made first of all obina was the best person for the great people of mbakasi's constituents and i can see my constituent is smiling there <laughs> because she knows it is the truth <laughs> and even well, another one from Utawala is here <laughs> and you remember when we came in he told you that yeah. Babu has been the best leader that we've yeah, yeah. We've, we, we, we've, uh, we've, uh, we've always longed for. Okay. So in Embakasi East, my, my role was simple, just to deliver, to work okay. for them, because I was elected on the ground that I should provide services okay. to the people. I should work for them. Okay. And the main challenges in Embakasi East constituency were, number one, roads. Okay. There was poor infrastructure, poor road system, poor road network. Number two, uh, water. Okay. Yeah, uh, water was a main challenge and it still is a main challenge and I'll tell you how we are going to solve it. Number three, sewerage and sanitation, a challenge. Then number four, we talk about unemployment. Okay. Then we talk about matters uh, raising school fees and uh, education, among other challenges that we have. So when I came in, I knew the challenges that my people were facing and I knew how I would solve them. When we look at the roads that I've constructed so far, a total of around 62 roads so far tarmac in Embakasi East constituency. If you look at, uh, you, you start with Donom. Okay. The Donom shopping center, the road around Dom Donom shopping center, tarmac. Okay. The road that is coming between Caltex and, uh, and, uh, and uh, Greenspan Mall, done okay. and dusted. Phase 8 road, done. There's only a small portion for phase eight road that, that is going to be done, and there's a part of it that is being done now as we speak. Okay. okay? The phase five road, done. Talk about the road that is uh, moving to Vumilia slums, done. The road between Vumilia slums and Kamola slums, done. Now, uh, the road between Jakaranda roundabout to be center, done. That's upper Savannah ward. Now come to lower Savannah ward. The road between Jakaranda to Mzeza, done. The road, the road between Mzeza to Catholic Church, uh, to 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 the famous uh, to the famous uh, bridge at mm -hmm. Catholic, done. The road that is moving from uh, from that bridge, okay. the one that you are talking about that is joining Jacaranda, that is moving all the way to Stage 75 in Bakasi Garrison Barracks, done. By done means Tama. Okay. okay. <laughs> now come to <laughs> you thank you for the come reminder. To, come to, <laughs> to Embakasi Ward. Yeah. The road uh, that was moving from Gate B. The one that you called me past midnight that day of dinner. That yeah. you know you have to make this road back. I know, you I can know. even fish in this I know, road. I was like, bro, this road hey, no. See, that road nowadays, how do you see it? Tama. Beautiful. Done. That is the road <laughs> that is moving yeah. from Gate B. Uh from further stage to Gate B. Okay. The road that is moving from Gate B to Kwandege Fellowship Church, done. The road moving from Kwandege Fellowship Church all the way to Tasia Police Post, done. Okay? The road that is moving from Tasia Catholic, yeah. from uh, Tasia Stage to Tasia Catholic, done. As we speak, okay. the road that is moving, <laughs> wait. Let me rephrase this question. Which roads have you not done? <laughs> <laughs> let, let me make it easier. <laughs> it's just, you know, I've not even <laughs> gone to Tawala and uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'm still moving. <laughs> I know, but now let's come to which ones have you not done? So which one are you all, is in plan? All in all, yes. now the road that is moving from uh, Kwandege to Kite School, yes. done. As we speak, the road that is joining Tasia Catholic going towards Kwandege is being tamaked as we speak. Okay. Now the one that you're talking about now that which ones have Which ones have not? Yes, let's focus on. Speak, yes, okay? yes. Now go to, go to Mihango. Okay. The road, uh, the famous road called the Ochok Road, done. St. Michael's Road, done. The road move, moving from Choka <laughs> Stage <laughs> to Maua Primary School, done. The roads, the <laughs> roads, <laughs> the roads, <laughs> the roads that are, <laughs> the roads that are in uh, Mihango, yeah. the ones going towards Karagita, towards uh, Mihango Chief's office, Mihango yeah. Primary School, those roads have been tarmacked. Now go to Tawala Eastern Bypass. There okay. used to be serious traffic. That's true. But look at That's the way. Uh, uh, now it's dual. The way we did you say dual? That now was it's, yeah. dual. Yeah, yeah. We, we expanded that road. There is no more All traffic the along that road. All the way to the one coming from. Uh, my, my, it's not Manyanja Road. The no. Kayole. Now the Manyanja Road in Donong. Yes. Done. 
Yeah, that is don't know my I was forgetting that. Yeah, you see, you see yeah. <laughs> now, now in Utawala alone, the road, uh, the road that is that is moving from Benedicta to Kinka, yeah. done. The road that is moving from Benedicta to okay. Mofam to Utawala Shopping Center, done. Okay. From Utawala Shopping Center to Fagilia, done. The road that is moving towards Mwai Kibaki, Mwai Kibaki Road, done. The road that is moving towards Gidunguri, done. El Shedai Road, done. Hey. <laughs> that is overworking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All this is Kera <laughs> and you. Na kazi. Ni Kera, Kera yeah. Ura, and myself. And yourself. Yes, because I'm the patron of all the roads, okay. of all the development projects in Embakasi's constituency. And okay. without me pushing for those roads, they can't be done. Okay. And I know what I always do to um, twist these people to make for me the roads. <laughs> and they will still do it. I will not say thank you. I will ask for more. <laughs> To be done in the wow. You say you have to twist them to make the roads. But <laughs> yeah. I think making roads is their job. But why do you have why, to why, twist why them for them to... They made in other constituencies. <laughs> Maybe we just have lazy MPs, but it is what it is. Now, we're done with the roads now yes. and infrastructure. Now, let's come back to the next... Because you've done a couple of things. So we, we've we have done uh, schools, we've done we bought buses schools? for schools, we've okay. done bursaries, we've we are we as we speak I'm building a secondary school at Donon. Okay. I'm organizing to build a primary school in Tasia, secondary school in Tasia and okay. a Tivet in Mbakasi ward. All that I'm doing this we've time done more classes. happening this yes. time. Yes. Or Rutambia Nipe ni kura tena nita. Aya, let's talk about bursaries. I've been seeing you sharing a lot of bursaries. How much have you given out so far? So far I've issued a total of around seventy million in Mbakasi East and I'm planning to give more. And uh, the reason why I, you know, Obina, I would not, I would rather not make roads, but educate our children. Those, those children will yeah. be engineers. They'll be leaders. They'll make those roads. Because a road can be made today, in five years' time, ten years' time, that road is done. Okay. But if you plant education in somebody's mind, education is the key to success. Education is the only treasure that you cannot steal from somebody. When you open the doors of a school, you close the gates of a prison. Education is the only weapon that when used well can transform the whole world. Okay. And education is our future. Okay? So, in the so, key front so about it. my main aim is to ensure that the children of Mbakasi East <coughs> are educated. I would okay. rather not do any other thing but ensure that they're educated. Because I know through that education, we have doctors there. We have yeah. teachers there. We have lawyers there. We have engineers there. We have leaders there who will develop this nation, who will provide skills okay. in this nation. So my main aim in Mbakasi's constituency is to provide, is to ensure that our children are educated. Okay. And that child who is at home, I feel so sad because I know what it is to lack school fee. I will chip in. I okay. will do whatever I can do to ensure that that child goes to school. Obina, you are talking to me today because of education. If I didn't go to primary school, nursery, I would not be here. If I didn't go to primary, I would not be here. If I didn't go to secondary, I would not be here. If I didn't go for my levels, I would not be here. If I didn't do my university, I would not be here. So I'm a product of education, and that is what I will embrace. Okay. There are those who are not uh, probably blessed to go to a school because of probably lack of school fee, lack of an opportunity, or probably they were gifted in another way or the other, probably talents or another thing. We understand them. But those who can embrace education, let's Wait. embrace education. It is the only thing that a mother who didn't go to school will go and sell mboga. A boda boda rider will get money. A person will go for mjengo um, just to get money to pay fee. That is how important education, education is. is. So you've given the bursaries for the students. Yes. Now, what have you done for Wamama, the Wamama for Embakasis? Wamama, we've done a lot for them. We started table banking, the highest group Oh, that's group your now. madam. I saw yes. your madam she's was... the patron. Was, oh, okay. Yeah, she's been very, very supportive. That's a pillar in my life. Okay. It's a story that you need to call me just to talk about just my wife. talk about... <laughs> okay? Okay, for, we'll call you back. over five hours, I can talk about my wife nonstop. Okay, we will revisit yes. Okay, because <laughs> yeah. she's a Proverbs 31 woman. 
Okay. I know her, bro. I may have been in your, fa <laughs> in your family for a minute. I know. I, I know. You see, you were even there at our wedding. You are the one who was I'm the, the one who hosted your wedding. Yes. I was the MC so of your wedding. I was the only celebrity invited in your wedding, apart yes. from family members. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, so, Bina, so. that is how much I, I value my family. Yeah. And my family, with an, by an extension, and Bakasi's constituents is also my family. And yeah. also Kenyans are my family. Because as a leader, I have to also work for them. Yeah. So generally, for the women in Mbakasi's constituency, we've done table banking for them. Okay. We've uh, enhanced ways by which we give them bursaries. The companies that have been around, at least we look for jobs for them in those companies. Some we sponsor them with personal financial uh, 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 support okay. for them to do various businesses, to boost their businesses. And generally, I also help them by prayers. I pray for them, which is the most <laughs> important thing, because the Bible says that you seek ye unto the kingdom of God first, and every other thing shall be added unto you. So I have to pray for them, so that that which they want to achieve okay. can grow. Sour. Now, wamama done, uh, students done, wababa, na vijana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Vijana, very important. Uh, also, wamama have been giving them uh, ways of fund to do businesses. Oh, okay. I, I give them loans from the constituency to do businesses. And right now they're even loaning themselves because uh, the funds that we've created in Embakasi's constituency is running to around, uh, around 8 million as we speak. So they borrow money mm, from, the, nice. from, 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 the, from the fund and then they return it with an interest. So before even Hustler Fund could think about this thing, I, I already had that mind of a hustler and I was already doing it. You see, at a constituency, Level. level. Okay. So by the end of the day, even the youth, the jobs around, there are so many industries and companies in Embakasi's constituency, and I still want to appeal to them. Those that have done their best, they've really tried, they've given us, but we will not say thank you. We will ask <laughs> for more because <laughs> those industries are in Embakasi's constituency. Okay. Kindly find it uh, easy in your heart to employ the people of Embakasi's constituency. Okay. Give them jobs. And for those that have done, like Coca Cola, Kemsa, containers, airport. They've really tried. I really congratulate you for the great job that you've done. There's yeah. supermarkets around. And uh, please employ more. Vijanas, wa mama, wa baba. Please see into it that our people get jobs from Mbakasi East. In construction of the schools, we give them jobs as vijana. Construction okay. of roads, we give them jobs there, even wa mama and, uh, and vijana. So generally, it's about uh, 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 it's about uh, Empowering whatever opportunity well. that I see, whatever opportunity that comes along, I try as much as possible yeah. to assist them. And now, what have you done about the insecurity situation in Embakasi East? Especially Uko Ukipita, Mihango was not that nice. Yeah. Also, some parts of Utawala, and also further Uko Ndani side the uh, Get Buki Ukifika Get B. Then you go down that I don't know the name yeah. of that stretch. Security that side was a little bit. Yeah. How is Generally, it now? Generally, Obina securities are going concern. Security okay. is you and me. So you must secure yourself first. Okay. Because security is not something that you'll say that a place is completely <coughs> secure. You see even Al-Shabaab, the way they surprise us with attacks and what, and so on and so forth. So by the end of the day, security is something that you take it as a personal initiative. And in addition to that, the presence of the police stations around, I talk to the OCPDs, the OCSs, the DCIOs, the policemen around there. We held meetings, several meetings. I built uh, an office for the DCI and uh, an additional office for the DCI in Embakasi Ward to ensure that at least security, more, more officers were, were brought in there to ensure that, uh, uh, that we pump enough uh, forces, the security forces, to ensure okay. that proper service is delivered to the people of Embakasi's constituency. Karagita used to be a post, now it is a police station. I remember Karagita, it was terrible. Yeah. It used to so look right terrible. now you see policemen are patrolling around, but I can't say it is 100% because securities are going constant. Yeah. It's about how we manage it on a daily basis. Okay. Yes. What are you doing about the water situation? Because water in Embakasi has been something Very that... Uh, Today you even had Ruto saying that water is going to be a thing of the past. Why? Because when I was in parliament in my first term. Okay. There's a water reservoir at Embakasi Garrison that is carrying a capacity of 14 million liters of water. That water reservoir was supposed to be constructed at Langata. But because of my megalomania, the vela, 
the strength, the power, I ensured that it was constructed at Mbakasi East Republic. Mm -hmm. Because that's a republic, these others are constituencies. Okay. So, <laughs> and in garrison so, to be specific. And in garrison where there's optimum protection. Okay. Yes. So by the end of the day, um, that water reserve yeah. is going to, prov to, uh, to provide a permanent solution to the issue of water oh, in this nation. Or it's being constructed now. Has been constructed. Or oh, it's done. It's done. Does it have done water? Dusted, done, dusted. Now okay. water, we are just waiting for water to be pumped from Muranga to oh, Gigiri, okay. from Gigiri to Mbakasi Garrison, where Mbakasi East is, where that water reserve is. Oh, okay. Then from there, that will be the distribution point. Then water will be distributed to various estates within Mbakasi East constituency okay. as a whole. In different estates, in different slums, only piping will be done and it will be fresh water. It will be a thing of the past. For temporary solutions, I did a total of 20 boreholes in Mbakasi East constituency. Okay. In the major slums, I did a total of 20 boreholes. In schools, Miango, I did three boreholes. At Miango uh, uh, Police Post, Miango Dispensary, at Miango Secondary School, there are boreholes there. In Tasia, there are boreholes. Okay. In, uh, in Baraka, there is a borehole. In Vumilia, there is a borehole. Amading, another one in Kamola. Uh, in Soweto, there are boreholes. So, so those are temporary those solutions ones were providing for now? temporary solutions for water as we await. 14 million yes. liters. Yes, permanent solution. So that's going to come so in how long? It should be there before frame? December. Oh, okay. If all goes well. If all goes well, oh, okay. if somebody does not eat money from this government. <laughs> <laughs> every chance you get, you're just throwing. You're throwing. A, a, uh, I can see you. Every yeah. time you get it, you're just trying to dig it. That is my work as an opposition member. <laughs> we will parliament. get to your opposition role in a bit. <laughs> uh, now, we are done with Mbakasi East. Uh, personally, I've been there. I've seen it. Good job you're doing. Continue. Now, the elephant in the room. You are not planning to vie again for MP come 2027. You're looking at becoming the governor mm -hmm. for Nairobi. You believe you will win it or you'll, you'll become the governor. Mm -hmm. What if Baba does not endorse you and let's say Baba decided to endorse Tim Wanyonyi? You know, you never know. With, you know, things happen. I've seen the wrangles happening within ODM mm -hmm. And I've seen some positions that you wanted, which I'll talk about uh, in, a, in a short while, given to other people, and you are not very happy about it. Now, what <laughs> if the governor's situation does not play out the way you, the way you, you are organizing or planning or thinking? No, Bina, that might be an elephant in the room, but it is a squirrel in the room. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I don't see it as, a, as an elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. And you know, uh, vying for governor <coughs> is tomorrow's problem. Today's problem is to ensure that the contract that I signed with the people of Mbakasi's constituency <laughs> is fully I implemented. You. I see you. <laughs> it's fully implemented. I see where okay. those degrees are coming in. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, the issue of Baba, yeah. you see in a family, there can be favorite children. Okay, you can, uh, you can prefer to like a child more than the other one. But that does not matter. That does not mean that you are not a member of that family. That does not mean that you are not a child in that family. Yeah. But even in the Bible, you remember when Isaac yeah. uh, was, uh, was, was, uh, w when Isaac was dying, he wanted to bless uh, Esau. Therefore, he sent Esau to go and hunt and prepare for him nice soup and bring the soup. But the mother... Then, when the, mother, when the mother heard, yeah. she told Jacob that you are the person who should take the blessings. The blessing. And therefore, Jacob conned Esau of the, ble the blessing. What you do with that story is up to you. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. Yeah. Now, you, you really wanted, uh, you, you really wanted to, to be the chair of two, do I call them? The it's oversight committees. Oversight committees. Yes. Park and pick. Yeah, park and pick. Yes. You are not happy. Yes. What happened? Uh, Obina, I'm a person who always uh, is very open to express his displeasure and also express his happiness in equal proportions, depending yeah. on which one comes past. If something is wrong, something is wrong. Me not being given a park chairman was wrong. Why and do I you still believe say so? it, it was wrong? Because... I was the person who was overqualified for that position. And I was the, I'm the person who, who deserved 
that reward more than any other person because in politics loyalty must be rewarded in installments and disloyalty must be punished instantly okay <laughs> so i ought to have been rewarded i'm the only person who was not rewarded from the presidential campaign team every other person was rewarded and this i'm saying not meaning that i'm not in the house i'm inside the house 100 percent but when there's a problem in the house we discuss as the children in that house together with our father who okay. is there so whatever occurred was not good because I was campaigning at the presidential campaign team from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and going back, coming back to Nairobi on Sunday. That is out of Nairobi. Then I only had two days to campaign in Mbakasi's constituency. So I also risked losing Mbakasi's constituency. Why it not that I just had an unworthy opponent? So on <laughs> Monday and Tuesday are the only days that I was campaigning in Mbakasi's okay. constituency. Then after all that, Every other person, if nobody was being rewarded, it would be okay. But if you see every other person is being rewarded, some got nominations, some got promotions, some got other positions. Whatever little the animal that we get, we got, that is what's supposed to be secured. Na mimi hata siku pewa hata mkia ya ngombe kukuza nayo inzi. Ngombe ya mechinjwa, parts imetolewa, watu wamepika, mimi inzi na nikujia kwa face, na hata mkia ya kukuza nayo inzi, I wasn't given. But you see, that is just a small thing. We should never lose the sight of a gazelle for a dashing squirrel. Okay? We need to focus on the bigger picture. And the bigger picture, part of it is tomorrow, which is mandamano. Ah. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> Ah, yeah. So the other one, we yeah. just talk about it now, by the way. The bigger picture, which is Mandamano. The picture is you used to be in the forefront of the Mandamano situation. Yes. Like Jeshi Ababa, Nini representing. Then when pick and pack situation happened, you mm -hmm. kind of. Ukenda Chinyamaji, Ata when the finance bill was being voted for, mm -hmm. you are nowhere in the vicinity. Mm -hmm. Was pack and pick situation the reason why you've decided to come? Ukochi. Now the school you kikula tiagas. What one kikula tiagas? Nule. The girls must be crazy. <laughs> You know, Bina, I was born a loyal person. Okay. And I will always remain loyal to Baba. Because I was born a loyal person. No amount of anything that is not done to me can sway me from not believing in Baba. Because that is the person I believed in. So a reward cannot make me not believe in him. Because the first day that I joined with Baba was because I believed in his ideologies. That has never stopped, and that will never stop. So I will still be with Baba. The issue of the finance bill on the first day, yeah. there was misrepresentation of facts. The speaker, Honorable Moses Wetangula, instead of telling us facts, he told us factoids. What he did was simple. He told us that on that day, we would not vote. Therefore, the voting would be carried to the next, the following Tuesday. And that on that day, there was just going to be debates. And then on the following day, which was on a Thursday, I, was, I had my court case. I had my court case, which is also very personal to me. And I had to go and prepare for this court case to ensure that I was giving, uh, I, I was giving my defense in court. Okay. okay, Missing that, not preparing for that, would land me into another trouble. Truth be told, okay? So I had to go and prepare. We prepare other, other witnesses. I had also to prepare for the defense. So it was something that I finished on the same day at midnight. But because Wetangula had said that we would not vote, so it was easy because I was in parliament in the morning. So I just left. You see other members of parliament also left, the likes of Honorable TND. That does not mean that they are not with Baba. We are with Baba and we are with the people, okay? Me, if I'm leaving... I don't need to pick a corner corner. I just call a press conference. And it becomes an international news <laughs> that will be aired in CNN, Al Jazeera, yeah. everywhere. Okay? Mimi si mtu wa atina piga kona kona pana. Yes. So because of, because of that occupational hazard that I had, yeah. I had to go attend to it. But you saw, during the third reading stage, which was the major voting stage, you saw how I voted. With all my body parts and organs, I voted no. <laughs> <laughs> okay? But now that it's, it's, uh, it's been stopped, so now it's still a, an act, really. It's not a bill. Are you guys celebrating? Am I you're still 50-50? In a way, like, where is it maybe? For me, you know, Mimi, I always say at times that what I can see while kneeling down at the bottom of Lake Victoria, somebody might not see while standing on top of Mount Kilimanjaro. 
Okay. Hizi vitu ni baldadash, nonsense. <laughs> Pigwa baldadash, gibberish. Hii <laughs> maneno ati at the court has stopped this thing. Yeah. They are going to allow it. If the court could rule in favor of Ruto for the presidential election, what is this? Tell me. They are going to surprise us. And actually it will, it will not be a surprise because we expect it to be. The court is just buying time probably to cool down the temperatures. But they are going to say, you know what? <laughs> Finance bill For real? be implemented, which is going to hurt Kenya. No feel it's going to be like another BBI. It's going to stop at the... You know, this thing is going to really, really, really hurt Kenyans because if I can see increasing tax, and you know I always wonder who advises uh, Dr. William Root. You know you can't study to you do pack a PhD. Then you take fools to advise you. The people surrounding the president now are fools. How do you explain to a class one that one plus one is equal to nine and not two? Why am I saying so? That you are saying that if you increase tax, then basically you are going to increase the revenue. That is wrong. In the, at face value, at prima facie, you might say that increasing tax will increase the revenue. But it will decrease. Why? Because if you increase tax, for example, fuel, what are you creating? Low demand. True or false? The high aggregate price, demand, high demand. price, yeah, yeah. low demand. Yeah, yeah. The demand for this product after tax has gone high will be low. The demand, yeah, demand when the supply. demand is low, the consumption is low. Okay. When consumption is low, you will not buy. If you are not buying, you are not paying more revenue. Therefore, you will get less revenue. As simple as that. And if you increase the price of fuel, you increase the price of any good and service that is supposed to be transported. But you know, in the demand Therefore, curve, the law of supply and demand does not apply in prestigious goods. I know that. Fuel is a prestigious good when it comes to... But now, let's, let's, now, let's now bring it down, break okay. it down. It is a prestigious good. Yes. But fuel, increasing the value of fuel, increases the value of any good Production. and service that is going to be transported or produced. Okay. How does it do so? Because the transport cost, the, 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 the matatu or the, the, or the means of transport that is going to transport this good from here to here, the value has increased. The transport cost is high. Yes. Therefore, for the transport cost to be high, the farmer will pay high transport. Yeah. Therefore, to, for for the farmer to to get the value of this, the the money for the transport to ensure that that money for transport is not lost, he will increase the value farm for produce. farm produce. Now, what does that do to a common citizen buying at a higher rate, which create creates high cost of living, living. which creates uh, the aggregate demand to go low because consumption of that good will not be high people will find alternatives yeah and the worst of it all kenya we consume 80 percent of imported goods including including toothpick tissue papers the clothes that you wear anything that you buy in a supermarket 80 percent eggs chicken imported. imported fish imported are you seeing that okay so if if you know if you are a wise president then how would you deal with this? You do what Mexico did. You reduce absorption. You deal with absorption. Because okay. Americans went and invested in Mexico. So Mexico ended up having so much debt as a nation that they could not solve. So what did they do? They decided to cure the idea of absorption. They decided that you see these foreign companies, we overtax them. Then when they overtax the foreign companies, the, the Americans ran back to America. Then in Mexico, now they started the issue of local production of the goods that they required. Through that, more jobs were created. Through that, the economy grew. So the president should cure what we call absorption. Increasing tax will increase the value of all goods and services. But Therefore, we'll take the value, the cost of life, the cost of living yeah. will be at the ceiling. You don't believe it starts from somewhere because when uh, revenue is collected, for example, tax, uh -huh. it's used to deliver service to the people. 
So when you start by this, there are some countries who also have high rates of, of tax. Mm -hmm. Look at the United States and the likes, but they use it to deliver services. Don't you feel that maybe the problem is when the money is collected, it might not do the job that's required, know that the money is you being collected Obina, is wrong. Those are what we call in economics leakages. Okay. There are things which we call leakages. A leakage is like corruption or money leaking into another economy. For example, we have multinational companies. Okay. We have ABSA, we have uh, these other banks, uh, Stanchart. Those are multinational companies. These are companies that are making money in Kenya, but all that money is taken back to their country. ABSA registered a total of 46 billion Kenya shillings as profit in the first quarter, approximating as a st statistician, by the end of the year, they will make around 200 billion. That 200 billion will leak into another economy. It does not belong to Kenya. Therefore, why don't you increase tax for these people as this money is leaving, so that you recover this money? So the government, what did they do? They reduced that tax from 35% to 30%. So we lost 5%. So 5% of 200 billion is 10 billion. So instead of gaining 10 billion from a multinational company, you want to tax Mtu wachini, that 10 billion deal party. Are you seeing we are not putting our priorities right? Are you, are, am I making sense? <laughs> yeah, you're making sense. Number I'm, two, I'm getting you were talking about that you see money, should, money will be collected. But yes. you see, I've already explained to you that increasing tax reduces the revenue collection. How? Because it reduces the demand of goods and services. People will not demand that good because the price is high. Therefore, if fuel is high, some people will be pulling their cars. Some people will leave their cars at home and now will be using matatus. Some people will be using bicycles. Some people will walk like Baba walked yesterday. You see? So by the end of the day, the consumption goes down. down. If consumption goes down, will the tax collected be more or high? Will, will, will it, it be, be more or less? It will be less. So increasing tax okay. reduces revenue collection. So you, you have a problem. I can assure you in the next financial year, yes. this one that we have, the government will collect less than two trillion that they've been collected, collecting on an annual basis. Okay. Now to remedy this, the ODM party leader said guys should get those drastic measures of carpooling, uh, uh, rejecting some products, not, have, not eating some meals and dressing in a certain way. He was in a matatu. He was in a matatu yesterday. Was he in a matatu today? Will, will he be in a matatu tomorrow? And did you also follow suit? Are, you, are we going to be seeing in a matatu let as me, well? Let me tell you. You see, eventually, yes. the long-term effect of this will not even be guided what Baba said. It will be guided by the fact that there will be no enough money for you to afford it. Therefore, people will do it naturally. People will just go to matatu naturally. Okay? okay? People will not... People will not spend other goods naturally. If you find that you have protein as uh, chicken and there's protein as peas or beans and beans is cheaper than chicken, what will you do? You will leave chicken and buy beans. So alternatives will be used. And okay. that alone will make the economy do what? Go down. Because the economy can only, boost, can only be boosted if, if the spending power is high. Okay. When you create high demand, High aggregate demand, you get high aggregate supply, you attain what we call the macroeconomic equilibrium. Well, Are we we're together? <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, class. Dispensing knowledge <laughs> carelessly. <laughs> <laughs> so, is that why the Mandamano is back? And are you going to be on the street tomorrow? And do you feel now, like you that's going to solve me anything? Being, uh, not being at the forefront of yes. the Mandamano. Yes, yes. Uh, let me tell you, Obina. I told you I always believe in Baba's principles, ideologies, okay? Maybe you've not been keen enough to look at me where I have been. There is no single mandamano that I've ever missed. In this country, there is no single mandamano that I've ever missed. And there is no day that I've ever missed being at the forefront when it mattered. I've always been there, okay? So, the mandamano is something which is constitutional. True or false? True. True. Right to pick it's constitutional. Yeah. Then we are doing our work. We are doing our work to protect the citizens from exploitation, degradation, and any kind of action. <laughs> <laughs> Do you believe that it's working? Because most of the time when you see, when you guys, uh, okay, when 
the people who support that ideology decide to go on the street and do mandamano, a lot of businesses are closed. Don't you feel like this one is hurting the economy more than it is helping? But you see, we would rather hurt the economy for a short-term basis then recover it on a long-term basis. For example, if we go for, and, for Mandamano for one year constantly and we save 60 years ahead, what is the problem of that? Is what my good friend, is what my good friend, may his soul rest in peace, is called Franco Modigliani, the Italian-American economist. He came up with something called the life cycle hypothesis, where you can enjoy what you ought to have enjoyed in 70 years, you can enjoy it now. <laughs> okay? <laughs> that, it is the origin of the loan system, which is meant for another day. I will explain okay. it another day. No, no, no. Okay. I've gotten it. Okay. The minute you just said the origin of the loan, then it just hit me. I never saw it. But now yeah. that you've said it, I'm like, so wait a minute. what you are supposed to enjoy in 70 years, you enjoy take it a loan now. now. Enjoy, Enjoy it, now, it now, as long as you can pay for it. Pole pole kisonga. Yeah. Then, this idea of mandamano, let us save. Let us waste one year and save 100 years to come. Rather but than... Pluto is not going to be than, 100 years. Rather than, rather than, rather than play dumb now, then we suffer for the next 100 years. Which is a lesser evil. Huh? <laughs> President is not going to be in power for 100 years. But so. you see, he's creating a problem. By that time, he shall have gone. But the problem shall have been recurrent problem, carried to the next term. So it's just been one year that this new government has been in power, and you're already not pleased with anything. Is there one thing see, that they've meaning. done right? You know, when it starts wrong, it goes wrong. Mafia's law. If it starts wrong, it goes wrong. So they've started wrong, it can only go wrong. Why do you come up with the issue of uh, Obina that now you want 1.5% of somebody's salary to go into housing, for example? Okay. Okay? House is a, public, uh, is a private good. Private goods should be left to be dealt with privately. Government should concentrate on public goods like roads, proper environment, and merit goods like education, and health to encourage people to consume it more. But a private good just provide jobs for people, they will build their own houses. If you want to deal with the issue of housing in... Now, let me now educate you, my brother. Watch a kwanza. I want to see you well. <laughs> uh -huh. we now. Let's go, let let's tell you. It. Yeah. They are saying, the Kenya Kwanza government is saying that they want to eradicate slums by the yeah. use of the houses. Number one, how many houses will you build for all Kenyans in Nairobi alone? Do you want to tell me that every Nairobian will have a house from the houses you are building? No. Number two, if you encourage the idea that you want to eradicate slums, which is a good thing, then will you really achieve it? It is so desirable, but not practical. Why? Because in Nairobi, let's say in Kibera slums or Soweto slums, where I come from, Nembakasi East, or Tasia slums. You want to eradicate Tasia slums. Don't you think that you're encouraging rural urban migration where people will now say, hey, in Nairobi we have houses, therefore let us go there. So we will end up uh, getting more slums sprouting up, more slums sprouting up, and you will, not, uh, you will not curb the slum menace. Why? You will not curb the crime rate. Why? Because there are no jobs, there's rural urban migration, as a nation, you are creating what we call the duo economy, where there's an economy for the rural people and there's an economy for the urban people. Okay? Number two, you are creating rural urban migration. And they are supporting the idea of farming. Do we do farming in Nairobi? Who will do farming in the village? Therefore, are we supporting uh, the idea of agriculture? We are not. So we are killing the economy further. So the best way to solve the idea of the housing is to create proper infrastructure. Number one, Introduce electric train. Be creative. Be intelligent. So that this train, you can move from Kisumu to Nairobi in 30 minutes and go back there. Live in Kisumu you have a house there. Yeah. You work in Nairobi, you go back to Kisumu. You work in Kiambu, you, you go back to Kiambu in the evening. You don't need a house 
Hata ndege anajenga nyumba yake bwana. Why can't we be given an opportunity to build our own houses? But you know, abad, these things don't have abad, an overnight. Abad it, takes it, time. it takes time. So even in Singapore where we are borrowing it from from a gentleman who, was, uh, who is called Lee Kuan Yee. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> My brother. This is an encyclopedia. <laughs> Today we are hosting an encyclopedia, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Lee Kuan Yee created an enabling environment okay. to eradicate slums. Okay. He did not build houses for people. So like I asked you, is there anything that you think the Kenya Kwanza government is doing right? They've done nothing. <laughs> So for you until now it's They've been it's about nothing. to be one about, year when July August is one year you, brother. zero let me ask that you me. can say apa they actually got it right rigija na raukanga ko office is in the office at 5 in the morning doing what is it about waking up early it's like you are saying you know <laughs> obina it's like you are saying that all old people are wise <laughs> even a young person who was a fool grows old to become a foolish person as he's old you see so by the end of the day obina there is nothing these people are doing. If I'm given this country to manage, I can manage it better than what they are doing. Fertilizer has already been uh, subsidized. Now farmers are getting cheap fertilizer. Have you heard what the farmers are saying? Number one, the fertilizers. Do you remember the scandal when Russia said that they gave us fertilizers for free? And these people said that they bought those fertilizers. <laughs> so it has started wrong, so it can only go wrong. And the truth is not truth if it comes from the devil. Huh? Truth is not truth if it comes from the devil. Am I lying? <laughs> if the wow. devil tells you something, will you believe? <laughs> yes. So Kesho in short, in, in a few words, Kesho uko mandamano. Mimi mandamano is, is my cup of tea. I started mandamano from the university. I was doing it alone and I used to do it from morning to evening. Nobody could pass. <laughs> True or false? True story. So that that, that man, and that man, the man who helped our students graduate, helped our students solve the issue of the fee. If university fee was increased, nobody would have finished university. If help delayed, nobody would have graduated. So, so somehow you you believe so, if Baba was president now, things would be different. You you, know, you really bought in that six uh, ask you, six thousand shillings idea. It would have worked. We knew how we were going to do it. That's why ah, I was campaigning Babu. spiritedly and Babu. religiously. For Baba, we knew people would be getting to be. six thousand random right money. Now, Bina, you would not, money going, you'd not be going to work. So is you get one different sources of income. Now, see, time get one in a year too, whether you are there or not. Hey. Hmm? You mean? Hey. You know, in Baba's leadership, the living would would have been respected, even the dead would have been respected. In this leadership, even the dead are disrespected. And the living now, you can't even talk about them. You see? Wow. So, number one, as a leader, the people who are surrounding you must be very intelligent and must know what they are doing. Tell me one person who has been put rightfully in any ministry, like Magoa was put in Uru's government as a minister for education, and Matiangi was put as a minister for interior. Kindiki. Kindiki is a very intelligent person, but in the wrong ministry. <laughs> Kindiki anaenda uko, 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 uko baringo. Kufika hapo, the bandits are just attacking somebody right in front of him. True or false? So who do you think would have been, been a better in that role that Kindiki has? It's not my work to plan for them, their government. <laughs> you see? <laughs> 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 wow. Okay, okay. <laughs> what, what, by the way, what is your opinion on the CAS's appointment? CS. CAS. <laughs> you know, CS, one CAS yes. could spend around two billion, the budget, per year. So if they're around 50, that is money that was just going into waste. So that is saving Kenyan. And that money can be used to provide jobs to Kenyans instead of just putting in a, in, in, in a specific office. Because the president himself was against the issue of increasing, remember the BBI, the constituencies yes. and the positions. So you guys knew what was in the BBI? 
But you see, <laughs> I'm saying he was against. Yeah, but because that was in the BBI. So you guys now, knew let's it was go there. Back to the debate of but the BBI. He, but, now you, tell you something. but you guys were supporting it. But you knew you were like, kiki hapa, lakini tu skume tu. Introduction of many constituencies yes. would have meant more basaris, would have meant more schools being built, more roads being built, more jobs being created. But it's still happening right now. No. You've done it in Mbakasi East without yeah, the... But, but let me tell you something. If Mbakasi East was split into two, and we have budget for Mbakasi East, and for example, we have another budget for Mbakasi East Limited constituency. Okay? Yes. Then we would have had budget for these two constituencies. There would be more bursaries to more students. More schools would be constructed. As you construct schools, more teachers employed. As you construct schools, more youths are working. More roads would be constructed. Ata tafadhali bunilete waeshimewa wenye awajasoma. It's like this guy is seeing through me. I can answer for everything. Now let a curveball and I chukuli hapo and I fini hapo. Wow. So you you supported the BBI. You knew some things were wrong, but according to you, they were right. There was nothing that was wrong in the BBI. Everything was right in the BBI. Ah. Everything was right in the BBI. Okay. But I, now I was coming to where our president said that he was uh, the court he was against the, the, he, yeah he was against the bbi therefore he should not support the cs because those are creation of are you know the one offices. who just said here that loyalty is rewarded in installments and this loyalty is punished immediately but you see you don't it is very important and urgent to reward loyalty in politics yes but is cs the only position they are ambassadors they can be given ambassadors they can be made directors general Okay, in parastatals. Some of them can serve tea, those who are not educated. Those, that, those are rewarding who loyalty. Who is there that is not educated? I don't want to go into detail. Kweli wongo, si kazi ni kazi. Si walisema kazi ni kazi. Wow. Yes, wapewe hizo kazi. Wengine waende mjengo kujenga nyumba. Ama? Okay. Sawa. So, <laughs> having said that, now let's get out of mm -hmm. the politics uh, story. Now let's come back to personal situation kidogo so we've been seeing the story that has been happening for dj evolve yes and about a week or two ago the story was it resurfaced again <laughs> yeah <laughs> so before i get into that story just a quick one uh watch a news gary okay go to magari affordable for the most affordable cars in Kenya. If you want to get yourself a car, umechoka kutembea, unataka ku upgrade look, unataka kufika mali, una pull up na whip moja safi, talk to Magari Affordable. They'll be able to uh, outsource for you locally or even import for you. And their payment terms are very, very flexible. Also, while you're there, and maybe you want to look as good as I'm looking today, Mona, you may change look. Yeah, the people to talk to are Royal Fit Style Hub. That is Royal underscore Style Hub on your social media. DM them or call them up. They are somewhere there in uh, Westlands. Uh, Karuna Close, Bavaria Gardens Shop number one. They'll be able to upgrade the way that you look. Usiko unakatu nde, mutu anakasa safi, mwanaume ni luku. Sindio. Having said that, let's come back to Evolve. You say, okay, first of all, you said you spent about 50 million yes. in taking care of him. Then Juzi, I think he spoke, and the story that we've known all along is that you shot DJ Vol. Okay, I know a different story because I'm your friend, so I know a different story. But the story that the public knows is you shot DJ Vol. And guys were really coming out, Babu, you know, should be arrested, da 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 da. Then you took care of him all through. You spent about 50 million. Evolve came about a week or two ago and said he did not see any gun. What really happened and what's that about? You see, Obina, number one, you've not said something that uh, you ought to have said that DJ Evolve also came out and said that I was supporting him as a friend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he said okay. that one as well, yes. And number two, do not create your own crime scene. <laughs> okay. <laughs> do not create your own crime scene. Okay. Yes. And I close it at that. Ah. <laughs> okay. Sasa <laughs> umefunga your story hata kama ijaanza because you are creating your own crime scene. <laughs> was, you you are not there. No, I wasn't there. Yes, but so don't create your own crime scene. See that's why I've okay. asked you. Yeah. What what So was, was there a gun? Do not create your okay. own crime scene. It's sour. Yes. Just asking. And, and, and this story has also taken a uh, uh, 
a political lango where now the government is wants to use it to intimidate me to bring it up in courts and wants to influence the decision in courts but it doesn't matter they should know that mimi i my arrest started from primary school boy there's nothing the government is bringing it back me i thought it's just normal there's a lot of politics in it but that's a story for another day it's tomorrow's problem not today's problem <laughs> okay yeah was this DJ Vol story the reason why you stopped drinking? No, 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 no. Because no. nowadays, Nimaji too. You know, I used to drink a lot. And the Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, chapter 3 from verse 1 to 8, that there's a time and a season for everything. Okay. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to mourn and a time to laugh. Okay. A time to weep and a time to laugh. Okay? okay. A time to drink and a time to stop yeah. drinking. So it was time for me because I did it, I enjoyed it while it, 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 it lasted, and it was time for me to stop, and I stopped. So there was no reason, you just made a conscious decision? It was a decision that I had to make as part of the many other decisions. Okay. Yes, I've made bigger decisions than even that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's not focus on drinking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're my friend, so nowadays when I meet you, you're just like, let her magic. Let her magic. I'm like, <laughs> Babu. The Babu I know. I'm like, I'm like, no, I stopped. I'm like, okay. And during the time that you kept on being arrested with the previous regime, because yes. of course you've always been in opposition, is it still working? Because house, baba I was like, I'm a baby for 13 years. So okay. that can tell you. <laughs> that the juice is worth the squeeze. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you know, bado in a chapa. I just wanted to ask. You know, you are you, you know, When you look at my body, I'm I'm built for speed and comfort. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't want to discuss this with you because okay. you're a fellow man. Okay, okay. you are lady. Yeah. <laughs> you have gone into details. <laughs> maybe, maybe moja imenini. I'm sitting on YouTube. I wanna get a couple of questions there. <laughs> yeah. Hey, me, I've been seeing the way you've been. Uh, Arrest us like, eh, hey, ujama, kama mm. mefinywa kidogo. Mm. No, umejua hata ukifinywa. Mm. But umejua cells, cells in a grown in a replace <laughs> in itself. A repl so, so, <laughs> 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 All right. So, Good. So now <laughs> let me get a couple of questions, about five of the questions that are really pressing on YouTube. So let me get the questions. Kamu kuna swali that unataka kuuliza, yandiki hapa chini. Uh, I'm going to... <laughs> wow, your fans are here. Babu to the world. Okay. Okay, okay. You are very intelligent. Okay. <laughs> the guest is so smart. <laughs> okay, viva Babu. The truth is not the truth when it comes from the devil. Aki simulite sama swali. Babu is here. We brought Babu here. Like five questions so I can... Uh, uh, I really like Babu. What advice can you give to people looking up to you? Yeah, that is uh, Zul King 254. Mm. Yeah. What I can tell uh, uh, my people and by extension uh, Kenyans is that uh, from wherever you are, you can always make it. And uh, always just stay focused. Be very desperate to achieve something. Be consistent. Be disciplined, and above all, put God first. Uh, uh, and uh, the most important thing is that uh, never lose hope. Okay. Never lose hope. Just fight on. If you are down, don't stay on the ground because your enemy will bury you on the ground. Fight your way up, and never give up. By the end of the day, you will make it. But if Babu Wino came from the slums and is a member of parliament, you can't be anything, you can't be better than me. If you are born in Nairobi, you have an, 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 an added advantage over Babu Owen, who just came to Nairobi by a bus. Okay. So you can uh, make it better than me. If you are in the village, if you are in any other slum, I also came from the slums. You can do it from wherever you are. But most importantly, as Kenyans, let us stay peaceful, let us love each other, let us build each other, let us pray for each other, let us never be envious of each other, let us never be jealous of each other. And, uh, and uh, those who feel disappointed by friends know that without Judas, there would be no salvation. You need that Judas in your life to, to produce the best in you, okay. to, to move you to the next chapter in life, to bring out the best character in you. 
Okay. So anything going wrong, don't worry about it. It was meant to be there so that it gets the best out of you. Because in every mess, there's a message. In every test, there's a testing one. Okay. What is your take on the Chinese presence in Kenya? That is from uh, uh, RNM on YouTube. I, I wouldn't fight Chinese so much because there are also Kenyans in China. Because that will uh, lead to, in public international law, I was taught to correlate. Okay. Yeah, we know how to correlate among countries because uh, uh, without those Kenyans in China, economy of China is going down. Without Chinese in Kenya, the economy of Kenya will also go down. So in one way or the other, we are coexisting. Okay. So I wouldn't uh, talk so much about it, but I think uh, we just need to coexist. Okay, with them. Yes. What's your take on Miguna Miguna? <laughs> <laughs> That's a mental case. Should belong to Madari. Mm -hmm. That man should be admitted to Madare ASAP. They're saying the story for Baba's arrest because we've had the stories people calling for Baba's arrest. Like yes. now, we have, uh, I think it was Kindiki and the police, where he was like, they should not be using force. And the police are like, listen, us, we don't listen to you. We listen to uh, the head of the police. And if this happens, and now Baba's car apparently had a stray bullet, there was an attempt on his life. And people are calling for his arrest, so this should stop. You know, number one, they should not scare people with death. The people who were there a hundred years ago, do they still exist? No. They don't. And we will not exist in the next a hundred years. Sisi water ni wage? And, and, and to dust we came, and to dust we shall, shall return. return. That is Genesis chapter 3 verse 19. Yeah. So by the end of the day, let, let them know that even them, this is what you are getting to go okay. on transit. This is what you are getting to go on transit. So they should not intimidate people with the issues of death. Okay. okay? And even the best of the best have died before. They are no, they are no longer existing. Okay. So Mambo ya death, they should not intimidate people with. Let Baba do his work as our leader in opposition. Yeah. Let them do their work because they said they have the government. Let them deliver whatever they, they're supposed to deliver. Let us do that which we are supposed to do. Baba being arrested. So issue of arrest, uh, if you want to bring civil war in Kenya. Arrest Baba. Arrest Baba. I can tell you, it is something that will never end. And it is something that even Sudan is just but a type of, uh, a tip of an iceberg. Where? How do you start arresting Baba? Just because he's holding demonstration, which is constitutional, we will not tolerate certain things. People who are, people like Akina Malala who are calling for arrest, those are people who are in drama club. This is not acting. <laughs> this is real. This is real stage. Akuna acting, apa? So, how ni watu they lack knowledge. Liquid intelligence. Baldadash. Gibberish. Nonsensical. It's okay. They get the <laughs> point. <laughs> <laughs> Do you consider yourself the next kingpin after Baba? <laughs> I think that is tomorrow's problem, not today's problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but leaders are chosen but, by God. Yeah. Definitely. When that time comes, we shall handle it as it comes. Okay. Also, something that I was I was forgetting that I really wanted to uh, give you your flowers on during COVID, you really did a good job with educating the the students, doing your classes. You, you had an office pale KICC. Yes. Is that office still there? Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah, you had an office up sure. KICC yeah. and uh, used to do lives. And I saw some students who performed really well. They came out and they said, Babu is the one who really helped us during this time. That was nice. What what made that start? Because from now, I may just saw class tomorrow. We are doing you da, 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 <laughs> with Professor Babu. I'm like, okay. So first me, I thought it was a gimmick. I thought it was not going to. Then later, this guy was actually serious. And you are revising papers and calculating. I'm like, okay. We are going to do Yeah. You know, Obina, one thing that I need to thank God and appreciate God about is uh, the ability that the God, that the Almighty God gave me. The brains. I never boast of anything. I never boast of whatever I have, whatever I own. But I will always boast of my brains because okay. it is what can change this world. It is what if we impact, if we share that knowledge with other children, with other students, is what will deliver us from the bondage of poverty. Because I know through education, yeah. it was done in China. 
by <coughs> Deng Zedong. <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> the names you have It was told. done. I'm in, like, I will in, have to Google that after this. Yeah. Is that Deng Zedong? Uh, Deng, uh, Deng, Deng, Deng Xiaoping okay. and Chairman, uh, Chairman uh, Mao Zedong. Chairman okay. Mao Zedong left for Deng Xiaoping. So it was done by Deng <laughs> <Yeah>. Xiaoping. <laughs> Even okay. confusing as more. And uh, it was head. done by Lee Kuan Yee in Singapore. Okay. We can do it in Kenya. Education will transform this nation. Providing refined skills okay. to help us grow our economy. The role of education in growth of an economy. Okay. It plays a major role. When uh, Deng, uh, Deng Xiaoping decided to employ people based on merit, meritocracy. Okay. Yeah. so that people could deliver so as a as a as a as a as a, as a member of parliament and as babo we know as a person who has benefited from education and as a person who was lifted up by others i saw the need of sharing my knowledge i saw the need of ensuring that our children can share into my knowledge why because during that period of corona people were idling people could get into drugs people could uh, our girls could get uh, uh, could be early married, uh, teenage pregnancies could be experienced. But if I kept them busy, as I said earlier, that an empty mind is, is a devil, an idle mind is a devil's workshop. workshop. Therefore, I needed them preoccupied. But you see, so many people uh, testified and said that, you know, Babu, it made me love this subject. It was not just about maths and chemistry, because the motivation behind it was for every other subject, that if I can do it in maths, you can do it in Kiswahili. You can do it in English, CRE, sciences, or any other subject. So by the end of the day, Obina, that was the best thing that, uh, that uh, I could offer. That is the only thing that I could give to our children, so that at least they be motivated. And I'm going to do it again. I'm going to walk in different counties, in all the 47 counties. I'm going to go in all the 290 constituencies to teach from class 4 to form 4 different subjects. I will be doing it because I just want to motivate them. They must see that if Babu did it from the slums, okay. it is the motivation behind it. They can also do it. A child from Trukana can be an engineer, can be a doctor, can be an actuary, can be a leader. A child from Kisumu Boys, a child from Nyeri, a child from Garissa or Northeastern, a child from Eastern, a child from the coastal region can make it. If they see that Babu came from selling Changa and is where he is now, what about them? You can be better than Babu or win. Okay. Yes. If and if I'm, go, I'm, I'm also introducing an online platform yeah. where our children will be getting content from grade one to form four, all the content. Okay. Yes. You are the one who will be doing the teaching. Ama. I'll be doing, yeah, and there are also other teachers that we've recruited okay. that are going to help us uh, to motivate. We just want to revolutionize the education system in Kenya. Yeah. Yes. Which is now someone here is asking for that's John Gidinji. What's your take on? Uh, on online freelancing and the likes, basically digital economy? Uh, you know there are no jobs, Obina. Mm. And with no jobs, any other person becoming creative. That's why I was very much, uh, I was so mad when I saw the government even uh, taxing the content creators. These are people who have become very creative because there are no jobs. So they are trying to create jobs for themselves. Therefore, we should not punish them for, for looking for jobs for yeah. themselves. So personally, I support that. I support the content creators. I support any other person who is doing any online business to earn a living. By the end of the day, to jaribu tu pole pole, tutafika kulembele. Okay. Yeah. If Baba today decides to get a handshake with President Ruto, where will you be? Will you move with Baba or will you remain with uh, Mimi na Pigania watu? I believe that uh, there will be uh, wisdom behind that handshake. <laughs> and there will be a reason, and the reason better be for the interest of Kenyans. Okay. Then we will move together. Okay. Yes. Wow. <laughs> wow, Babu. Wow. <laughs> just, just wow. It's <laughs> fine. It's fine. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> In conclusion, any word to the people who love you? Let's start the people who love you, then you go to the people who don't love you. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, fellow Kenyans. Uh, we've really talked and we've shared a lot. Uh, temperatures were high, a bit low, moderate, median. But by the end of the day, at least, at least we've managed to share something. 
And I want to tell you as Kenyans, just the, the same way I said it before, that uh, let us unite, let us be peaceful, let us love each other, let us grow each other, let us be there for each other. I believe that uh, uh, we are one nation, one Kenya, uh, that, should, that should coexist. We, we learn to coexist with, uh, with each other. And uh, I want to tell you from wherever you are, that it doesn't matter where you are. Keep moving. Just make a step at a time, so long as you're moving. If you're not moving, that is where now, uh, if your mind is not moving, if you're not moving at all, that is where now your fall starts. Let us move, and we, I believe that we can always make it together, irrespective of where you come from. But above all, make sure you put God first. Everything you do, put God first. Spare some time to worship. In the morning, when, before you leave, tell God about your plans. In the evening, when you come back, pray, thank God about the day. Tell God about your plans so that he can realign them according to his plans, so that by the end of the day, you achieve anything that you're supposed to achieve. Because I believe if others have achieved it, you can achieve it. Thank All right. You. Message for the ones who don't like you? For the ones who don't like me, I will make you like me. <laughs> May God bless all of you. <laughs> All right. Yes. So thank you so much, Mweshimiwa, yes. and my friend for coming through and for honoring the invite. It's been eye-opening. Personally, I've learned a lot, and uh, I'm grateful that you came. I've seen people asking that I should ask you about Jalango, but the reason why I've not asked you about Jalango is because tomorrow I will be hosting him here live. All factors remaining constant. If everything goes as planned, tomorrow we're going to be having Mweshimiwa Jalango over here, who's also a very good friend of mine, and the hot seat will be burning. Kesho atakalia jiko. Sasa hizo maswali zote mukonazo yujia mweshimi wa jalango. We know he's currently considered the prodigal son of ODM. Yes. So tomorrow we'll be having him here, uh, God willing. And you'll be able to ask him all the questions that you want to ask him. So tomorrow, stay tuned, 9 p.m. We'll be live from Miale 72 Lounge in Lovington. And uh, maswali zikuje moto moto. But for you, asante sana. Asante, God bless asante. you, my brother. <laughs> 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 Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, and subscribe. And tell us any other Mweshimiwa that you want to see here. What I'm actually doing, I'm reaching out to all the MPs who either they've been there, this is their second term, or this is their first term. I want them to sit here and tell us what they've done and what they're planning to do for your constituents. So if you know your MP, let me know. Tell them Obina is looking for you so we can have a seat. We've had uh, Mweshimiwa Babo Wino. Tomorrow we have Mweshmiwa Jalango and the list goes on and on. Thank you so much for watching. Good night. God bless you.